Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of What The Hall. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about... Start the intro. So do you remember in one of the last episodes I was talking about how <laughs> it's artificial knit season? Well, it's also cashmere sock season. We just came out of the polar vortex and uh, definitely was uh, going to bed wearing cashmere socks. And <laughs> because it's that cozy, cold time where you're, you're, you're bundling up around the house, it's also the time for me to start lighting up these uh, feu de bois candles. So I want to talk briefly about Diptyque overall as a brand. And I also want to talk to you about some things that I've purchased in the last couple of months. Several months ago in Toronto, uh, they opened up the second Diptyque store. I haven't had a chance to go in, but definitely please let me know if you've been and what you think of it. Yorkdale is fine. There's nothing wrong with going to the mall, especially when the weather is like this. But let's be honest, there's something about being in Yorkville Village, something about um, going to like a high street sort of environment and, you know, walking up and down with a nice little coffee, getting the fresh air. It's a whole vibe, right? This, 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 this topic might be a little bit it's childless behavior. Your money can absolutely be spent on more useful, more practical things. But I would also argue that you can't take money with you when you leave this earth. So spend it now and enjoy it on things that make you happy. I arrived at this brand on the back of a gift somebody gave me, which was the, the three pack, 370 gram candles, roses, bay, and figuier. They're three signatures. Don't like bay because it's too sweet. Figuier is fig and also smells identical to Philosicos. I like that on the skin. I don't like it around the home. And roses, I like the fragrance of the candle. Don't like the fragrance of the perfume. And that's the thing about Diptyque. It's such a beautiful brand to give because it is such a luxury. If you have friends who do appreciate this sort of stuff, as long as you know that person's taste, I think you can't go wrong with any number of their candles. There's just so many that they offer. A feu de bois is my winter staple. So it comes boxed like this. You get the little leaflet. I typically use candles, one, when I am concentrating and trying to edit, but also, you know, when you have that Saturday or Sunday afternoon and you've turned on the music really loud and you've cleaned your apartment or your home top to bottom, I will light up a candle just to kind of put a period or to punctuate the day's cleaning. On the website, the, the copy reads, it's the arboreum of trees, a fragrance that evokes logs crackling as they are consumed. The large candle celebrates winter and the dense smoky notes of an open fire. The enameled gray porcelain vessel is embossed with the emblematic oval of the maison and the dancing letters of the iconic scent. The night comes alive with the shadows and lights. Oval is the signature shape at Diptyque and dancing letters, you know, because you always have to kind of second can guess how you're reading the, the fragrance on their product. It comes in five sizes. This one I have is 600 grams. It comes in a five wick, which is one and a half kilo. It has 90 hours of burn time. It's 5.1 inches tall and four and a half inches in diameter. I have a hard time contextualizing what inches look like versus centimeters. And over the years, there's been several fragrances. Three that were the most surprising that I really relish, that I wanna go back to are Benzoin, Jasmine, and Oud. That Jasmine fragrance is so vibrant. It's the same mood as the Aqua de Parma Bongiorno, but more floral. Also, the Oud candle is quite special in that Oud fragrances on my skin don't always stack up, but around the house, that candle is so beautiful. They have come out with some interesting innovations. They recently recently had come out with fragrances that are refillable and they come in these glass containers. They are completely different to the, the classic offering. These are new compositions. I feel like as long as their, their containers continue to be decorative, one doesn't really need refillable candles. This one has uh, reusable cotton pads, right? If you go onto the Detique site, you can find bases, lids, snuffers, scissors, all sorts of accoutrements for your candle situation. The things that I do on a regular basis, burn it for a minimum two hours at a time. As the candle is burning, if ever you notice that the wick might be on an angle or maybe off center, just wanna shift it with a knife or something that you can clean off easily. Whenever you're finished with your candles, I don't blow them out. I always cover them with a plate. Unless the candle comes with a lid, let them sit there for at least 30 minutes just so that the wax cools off and is level when I go back to, to using it the next time. 
time, the wick always should be only a few millimeters above the wax to prevent that pooling from happening. And this is the purpose of a wick trimmer. Take off some of the excess uh, wick that's been burnt at the top in the split screen. <laughs> I think it's on this side. I'm gonna put the directions as per diptyque if you want some more candle content, there was this one video that I found several months ago. I don't know what the guy's name is, but he did like a tier list of fragrances. It was a really, really good video. I kind of agree with some of the takes that he had. In terms of other brands that I would recommend buying into, in one of my last videos, I did mention the Aqua de Parma have a really underrated assortment of candles, in particular in Sieme, the Myrto. It's more of a summertime scent, so I've put that to one side. And uh, Buongiorno, Maison Marie Louis, whatever it's called they have that Balancourt or number four whatever it's called but that fragrance is identical to Figuier and Philosophos from Diptyque Paul Smith recently came out with some beautiful candles great scents really cool packaging and then of course the La Double J I love the La Double J candles the vessels they're porcelain and they have that I don't know what that that style is called eclectic maximalist thing about them you if you've seen what their garments are like you know what their um their aesthetic is that's what they've um, translated into those candles the smells are beautiful these candles are heavily heavily discounted so if you can get to a simon's seek these out be the essence sale might actually be over by the time i upload this the diptyque holiday offering is heavily discounted as well my two faves from this christmas the cotton and sapine which is the, their signature christmas candle it's like their evergreen forest scents and they came with gold lids as well which are really Really handy this is something new that i just tried out this hand bomb and this is called the luxurious hand bomb there are other hand creams i suspect are lighter textures it's quite stiff it doesn't move it's not a fluid cream the texture is really good it's quite creamy it feels protective and the smell is incredible it's quite marzipan -y, a fresh sort of sweetness as opposed to something more saccharine like they said in that mugler interview bear a papa bear a papa Bera Papa, which is uh, cotton candy. So it's not as cloying or as overly saccharine. My knuckles can sometimes get discolored. I think I get eczema on my hands, if I'm honest. This year has been really good. I mean, we're almost towards the end of January. Uh, no discoloration on my hands, no hard skin. It boils down to the fact that I've been consistently putting on hand cream every single night, just right before I doze off. What else did I want to share with you? The hand wash. I used to be devoted to the Byredo. I recently picked up a set for my friend from Aesop. It's a beautiful orange rhiny fragrance. Their refills come in stupid packaging. And also their sets come poorly packaged as well, I have to say. The Diptyque hand wash is that fusion of like lavender meets barbershop. You know, sometimes when you're cooking and you get like food smells in your hands, like onions and garlic, I find lavender is very good at masking um, a lot of food odors. So it's really handy to have in the kitchen. It's not drying. I find it to be quite mild and I love the presentation. I love the glass. I like that it has that embossed oval in it. It's stupid money, again, childless behavior, but the refills. The refills are an absolute pain in the ass to get a hold of. During Black Friday or Boxing Day, I can't remember which of the two, Holtz was having 10% off throughout the beauty hall. I was able to pick up a couple of refills, uh, discounted versus going to Diptyque online. Their shipping is extortionate. And yes, when you order from them directly, you do get this beautiful packaging, dust bags with the Diptyque branding, samples, the whole nine yards, right? But the trade-off is they gouge you when it comes to the shipping and it's only crossing the border from, I think, an American distributor. Some of these websites that I shop at, like Essence has all the Diptyque product. They don't have the refills in stock and they haven't had them for months. Uh, Holt Renfrew, to get free shipping, you have to spend $250. Well, I'm not at Holt's that often. If I'm going to buy pricier items, I typically shop at Essence because, you know, I like the loyalty scheme you have to constantly be on the lookout and just have your refills on standby you don't want to be caught slipping for the time being i like diptyque i will continue to shop there until i find out what their business interests are i will make some time to go to the diptyque brick and mortar let's see if they come out with a toronto candle also february is just around the corner they've come out with the valentine's day range this year it's nothing special most years they have a limited edition rose scent this year is just limited edition packaging do you have a favorite candle? I mean, whether that's from Bed Bath & Beyond or um, Joe Blurn, leave that down below. I'm curious, I'd like to know. Also, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down, however this video moved you. And as always, thank you for listening. Thank me for speaking. I will catch you in the next one. Adios.